record. Uh, has it been done? Is it recording? Yep, recording is in process. Good. So this webinar is going to be for new club from the new club creation series. It's our second webinar, and we have a very special guest speaker today. And the process of attracting new members can take a long time, especially for a new club or an existing one. Now, with the right tools, preparation, and correctly organized uh, your an organizing of your club launch or relaunch event, you can actually drastically speed up the process towards getting 20 plus members. And that can be as short as two weeks, and the chartering process can happen soon after that. So this webinar will deal, uh, will deal with how to correctly plan your club relaunch or launch event, how to prepare your club launch team, and how to run the meeting successfully for the best possible outcome and results. Following the webinar will be a Q&A session to fully enable you to create your own Toastmasters club or relaunch an existing club and have an experience which is positive for everybody. The speaker profile um, who we're going to be having today is actually somebody which somebody or some of you may already know. She, her name is Elena Pavetta. She's the Area J1 Director, and she's chartered a Toastmasters club in a few weeks after the launch event. So what she's telling you today, she's actually done in real life herself. It's not theory work. This is very practical. She will present the simple steps she learned from District 74 experience, which allowed her to open and charter a club very, very fast. Elena is a curator of TEDx events in Łódź in Poland, and has a PhD or is a PhD researcher in the field of entrepreneurship. With that said, I'd like to hand the microphone now and the rest of the presentation over to Elena. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me to this webinar. I would be happy to share my experience uh, in starting a club with you. Yes, I started the club very fast. It was only a couple of weeks between the launch event and uh, the chartering date. So today I would like to share with you the tools I learned when I, I, which I was using when organizing this launch event. Uh, so at the beginning, uh, I would like to, in the first part of the webinar, I would like to tell you how to prepare to the club launch meeting. What do you need to prepare? How to brief your team? And after that, I would be happy to answer your questions. You can write your questions in the chat box when I will be talking and during the question and answer session, I can answer any of your questions. And uh, in the in the second part, I will describe how this launch event looks like, how you should organize it, and uh, what to do after this event. So the method which I used was proposed by Rick Furbush, an American Toastmaster. I sent the video to the Facebook event group. If you didn't see it yet, I really encourage you to see. Uh, there are two 15-minute videos of Rick Furbush. They are called Toastmasters Kickoff Made Simple. And uh, what he really shares really useful tips for starting the club just with one very energetic, very fast meeting. And uh, District 74 developed this method and developed a set of documents which can be used at this first meeting. And I will also share with you those documents after this webinar so that you can adapt them to your club experience. R uh, what Rick Furbish says is that you can start a club easily, you just need a room and 20 people in it. And you have to run the meeting in a certain way, this launch meeting, to persuade them to join the club, to become charter members at the spot. But firstly, how to prepare for such a meeting? So 
the first thing you need to do is to find your team. You cannot start the club alone. You need to have your team. Uh, talk to Toastmasters from your club, from other clubs. Everyone has his own incentive. Maybe someone wants to make a high-performance leadership project. Starting a club can be easily an HPL project. You can tell them that uh, they can make project number 6 or number 10 from CL menu, organizing special event or helping to organize a special event. Maybe someone wants to become club mentor or club sponsor. Someone wants to make more speeches or to learn English, for example, if their club is speaking in a different language. So everyone has his own motivation. When you gather your team, read how to build Toastmaster Club manual. This is, everything is there. Please don't, don't start reading this manual only when you want to charter the club. Start reading it when you plan to start a club from the very beginning. And what I also recommend you to do before the launch event is to get your charter kit to register prospective club. To do that, you need to fill in forms number one and number five from those charter forms. This will mean that your club will be registered uh, at Toastmasters Org webpage and it will be prospective. It will have its name and number and uh, you will be sent a charter kit. You will have to pay $125 for that and of course you can borrow this money from another sponsoring club because uh, you can have up to one or two sponsoring clubs uh, of, of a new club. Why do you want to do this? Because at the launch event your guests, your new members can get their manuals at the spot, you will have your timer cards, you will have your gavel, you will have everything what normal club has. So it is very important to show guests that club already exists and has everything. Uh, you want to start promoting your club launch meeting several weeks before the event because uh, and uh, what you uh, want to promote is promote that we are starting a new club. This is not a, just a demonstration meeting. This is a club launch meeting and uh, at this event you can join the club, you can write information about the club fees already in the, this uh, Facebook event or newspaper, this method itself doesn't tell you how to get guests. It tells you how to transfer guests into members. So you need to find guests yourself. For me, for example, uh, worked um, social media. We were advertising our event on Facebook. Uh, also, we, we had some advertising in local communities. We had a meetup group. And, uh, well, we were just networking and uh, talking to other Toastmasters in, in our communities and inviting them to join, to, to help us with starting this new club. Before this launch meeting, Brief your team. Tell them that this is not a just demonstration meeting where we show what we do every week or every two weeks in our club. This is meeting which is intended only for guests and uh, we have to be focusing only on our guests for, to give them as many opportunities to speak as possible. And uh, we know that Toastmasters like to speak a lot. <laughs> so please 
uh, re remember that uh, to tell them that this meeting is only for guests. Tell your team not to speak up too much, to give the opportunity to get for, to guests at the meeting to speak. And of course, before the meeting, you need to prepare your document. And uh, I recommend you uh, can choose what you want to use from those sets of documents. I will send them to you. Uh, I recommend to organize a set of documents for the registration and uh, the guest package. Registration set of documents is guest list, success planning sheet, I will show it to you in a while and table topic cards and of course some promotional materials from the charter kit. Firstly, uh, guest sign-in sheet. You probably use it in your clubs. This is uh, the place where guests leave their contact numbers, emails, how you can contact them after the meeting. Then you would need a success planning sheet. This is the document which you will need in the end of your meeting. When guests who will join your club will plan their future meeting roles and speeches. I will uh, tell about this process a little bit uh, later. And uh, you will also need to prepare table topic cards. This is what Rick Furbish uh, suggests to do, and it worked really good in our club lunch meeting to uh, not to ask people out and to scare them with uh, table topic questions, because some guests, they are so scared to be at the stage and answer some strange question that they never come back and you what we want to do is to give people winning situation in public speaking so ask them before the meeting to write something interesting about themselves something they're proud of maybe something nobody knows and of course they write something they care about, something they are interested in, for example, um, that someone went, lived in Japan for several months. And such information can be used during table topics afterwards. And uh, I will tell about the, the process of table topics a little bit later as well. Uh, so this was the registration documents and uh, every guest should also get his package of set of documents and um, I suggest to put there, of course you also can choose which documents you want to use. I used all of them and uh, they worked really well because they are needed at different stage of uh, Firstly, you can give them a welcome letter at the beginning because you will not have an opportunity to welcome each guest properly. Then uh, they, you want to give them agenda. This is an example of our agenda we used at our launch meeting. As you can see, this agenda has all the details, like the club already exists. It has name of the club, venue of the meeting, time of the meeting, information about the next meeting as well. So the, this agenda shows guests that they can be sure that if they come back here a week later, they will have the same meeting, with the, same, the same energy. We also put in the guest package the icebreaker project because this is somehow our product we want to show um, because uh, they rather will not get their manuals at the first meeting unless someone wants to pay at the first meeting for membership. 
but if they get the icebreaker project, they can start preparing it already for for the next meeting, for example, in a week. Uh, you also want to put their evaluation checklist. This will help in group evaluation because uh, this is one of the methods to involve guests, guests into a conversation, to give them opportunity to speak, is to make group evaluation of one of the speeches. And uh, here they can see different hints, what they can pay attention to, and how they can evaluate the speech. Of course, you want to give them membership applications. And what I recommend you to do is to write as much information there as you can. Club number, club name, and club city should be already there. And mark with the color places they need to fill in, because there are lots of fields. They don't need to, to write everything. So mark name, address, email, and signature. They don't need to write anything more, because you need to make the process as simple, as fast for them as, as it is possible. Uh, what else can you put there is um, leadership opportunities. I will also send, I will send you all of those documents and you will see how it looks like. This is the list of all uh, functions they can take in the club. Uh, you can show them that they can be president or vice president of the club and this is a, a real opportunity for every member of the club and the list of transferable skills, what they can learn when they are a president, what skills they can learn when they are vice president of PR, and so on. And of course, what I recommend you to give to your guests is Toastmaster magazines. There are 20 magazines in Charter Kit, but you can also collect them from your members I'm sure that every Toastmaster has lots of those magazines at home and you can just ask them to to bring it to one of the of those meetings and collect to one of your club meetings, collect those magazines and use it for your guests. So this is uh, basically the preparation process, how it looks like. Just uh, get your team brief them and uh, prepare all the documents you need for the launch meeting. So if you have any questions on that, I would be happy to answer. Okay, so we have a few questions for you to answer then. So the first question comes from, I believe the name's pronounced Gutis, and he would like to know how to attract those 20 eager starters to start a club how to attract uh, guests to the meeting, right? Uh, that's how I understood. How to attract those 20 eager to start a club. Okay, so as I uh, told you, the method I'm presenting is not telling you how to attract guests. It just tells how to transfer guests into members. Mm, I can just share my own experience. Well, I used Facebook and I used uh, Facebook ads because if you promote your event, promote your post just uh, with a small amount of money and for starting the club you can get financing from your division or from district and uh, a small promotion on Facebook can get you many additional uh, views on Facebook. What also worked for me is advertising in local communities. When I knew that some communities are interested, for example, in English language, communities of foreigners, for example, and the club I started was an English-speaking club. So I knew that I could find some someone who would be interested there. That's good. And then we have another question from Jacob. Uh, how 
uh, can you post the link to the District 74 video by Rick Furbish to the District 95 fan page if possible? Um, I posted the vi YouTube video of Rick Furbish in the in Facebook event. So I think that uh, if you go back there, then you can find you can find this video. There are two 15-minute videos there. Good. Then the next question from Gutis was any ideas on marketing? I think you've already answered that question. So I'm going to go on to Greta's question then. Is members get their manuals when they pay 125 euro? Isn't that 20 euros per member or both should be paid still? Uh, yes, $125 is only for the charter kit, so it, it is not what members pay. Uh, this is charter kit for the club, and uh, guests, when they join, of course, they need to pay this uh, $20 for manuals and $45 for the club dues. Yep, that's a good point, that we always work in US dollars, not in euros. The next question was from Adam. In which phase, <clears throat> sorry, in which phase do you tell the attendants about the fees? Mm -hmm. This is a good question and uh, I will be talking a little bit about it in the second part. Actually, what I recommend you to do is to start talking about the fees from the beginning, uh, from the moment when you start advertising your launch meeting. When you post the information on Facebook or on the web page, tell this information so that people who come to the meeting, they, oh, they already know what to expect. Another point is uh, in this welcome letter and in these documents, there is also information about the fees. So when people get their documents at the beginning, they, they can see what's, what the fee is. But in the end of the meeting, when you make close, then you come back to this issue, of course. You, you start talking about it in the end, however, they know about it from the beginning. That's good. And then one question from Ania is, when is it the best time to announce such a demo meeting? Is it three or four weeks ahead of time enough? Uh, yes, I think that it's enough because in my case, uh, I think that I announced it three or four weeks before. Exactly this, the same timing. And then another question from Gutis is, there are only <clears throat> Sorry, there are only three very active members and several auxiliary helpers in their club, so they have very limited resources. What would you recommend us to spend their time on to attract new members? I think you've already answered that one. Uh, but the question that he recently just posted was, what's the difference between a chartered club and a prospective club, and can both compete internationally? Mm -hmm. uh Prospective club cannot compete, they cannot take part in, uh, in speech contests and uh, they cannot uh, also have discipline points, right? And uh, so prospective club is with a club which is uh, about to, to charter, so basically it's uh, it just has its number, and I think that club can be prospective only for one year, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, David, if you can correct me on that. Yep, it's one year, and then there's a possibility of a one-year extension. So there's like two years after that in, in different circumstances, so you're ah. correct. And that's all the questions we have so far, if you'd like to continue. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so let's move to the second part. We discussed the preparation for the launch meeting. You have to get your team, to prepare them, to brief them, to preferably register your club as prospective and get your charter kit and collect all the documents you need. 
print them out. And uh, of course, the most important part is the meeting, the launch meeting itself. It is based on the uh, on the rule that if they speak, they will join. So you have to give your guests as many opportunities to speak as possible. You have to activate them as much as possible. And uh, the launch meeting can, during the launch meeting, you can do it in many different ways. Firstly, you can do it through the question of the day. And I know that in some clubs it is not practiced but here we do it. It's a very good um, idea to activate people from the beginning. You can ask a short and simple question, for example, why do you think public speaking is important? And give them 30 seconds for an answer. Remember not to ask Toastmasters, because Toastmasters are there for help, to help you to organize the meeting, to help you with speeches and roles, and guests should be the ones who speak all the time. So ask them, you have to moderate the discussion, if they are shy, ask them this question of the day, and the second opportunity for guests to speak is group evaluation. As to the speech uh, speaking program, if you have community club, it is good to have two speakers. One uh, speaker can be can give a speech from competitive communicator manual, and the second speaker should be really good speaker, advanced speaker, um, so that you can show your product the product of Toastmasters. So what can you become when you will be in our club for a couple of years? And uh, one of the speeches can be evaluated by the evaluator, and the second speech can be evaluated by everyone. So before the second speech, you can tell people that mm, Please take out your evaluation checklists, show them how it looks like so that they all take it out and uh, tell them why do we make evaluations, why it is so important, because we want people to develop their skills, we want them to improve uh, every meeting, and uh, now you can tell them that now you can be evaluators and uh, just go through this list of things to pay attention to. And uh, then after the speech, you can also moderate the discussion. Ask them, what did you like in this speech? Uh, what do you think could be improved? And here people are really um, getting very enthusiastic because they realize that they can have an opinion, that they, they can tell something, they can help other people to improve their skills, even they can make an opinion on a very advanced speech. So, it is, and it is also, again, it is very important to ask everyone, every guest, to activate them as much as possible. And the third, uh, the third moment when you can activate guests is uh, table topics. Mm, as you remember, before the meeting, you ask them to fill in small cards where you ask to write something interesting about themselves, mm, something they are proud of, and when Table Topic Master uh, comes out, he takes out those cards and uh, he can uh, just uh, play with the audience. And again, uh, Rick Furbush suggests to ask, for example, who do you think uh, lived in Japan for half a year? And so you can not do it. You can just, for example, ask uh, one person out and tell, 
tell him, please tell me, tell us for one minute about your trip. And he gets very enthusiastic about it, and it is easy to speak about himself, about his experience. Why do we do this? Because uh, we want to give people winning situation in public speaking. We don't want to scare them. And uh, again, if you have lots of guests, then you can make those uh, speeches shorter just to get as many guests speaking as possible because you want to activate all of them. So after the table topics, this is our agenda again. There is the most important part of the meeting, which is very often forgotten at such meetings, demonstration meetings or meetings when you want to get membership applications. Because you have to remember what is the goal of your meeting. The goal is to start a club. And to start a club, you need 20 membership applications. So you have to get those applications, right? And in order to get them, you have to ask for them. So it's a very important part of the meeting, in the end, to make the close, to ask for applications. You can tell guests that Okay, so you saw us in action, you saw what we do here in the club, and now this is time for you to act, and in your packages you have membership applications. If you want to start your Toastmasters journey, journey towards confidence and so on, to, to name all the things they can get out of being a member of the club, so you can fill in those only the green fields in, in those applications. And I really encourage you to watch Rick Furbish videos because he gives so many tips how to make this close effective. He uses, for example, the scarcity mechanism. So he tells that only 21st members can become charter members. And if you you give your application today and you will be among those 20 first members, then you will be one of the founders of the club and you will get your charter certificate. Uh, also as to uh, talking about the money, he also tells how to talk about, uh, how to talk about fees. Um, he tells, for example, not to use such words as join or sign up, but rather to use words like starting your Toastmasters journey because they are less aggressive. Basically, uh, he offers some techniques of uh, closing the meeting. Uh, they, they are actually very good sales techniques and you can learn a lot conducting this event. You can learn a, a lot of new techniques how to persuade people. So after uh, signing the applications, of course you cannot force people to sign the application. This is obvious. Some people just come to the meeting to watch. Some people want to stay in their Toastmasters clubs. They want, don't want to join the second one. and. Uh, you can just offer them to do this, right? You cannot tell them that you have to fill in the application. But after this closing part, divide people into groups. And each group is run by an experienced Toastmaster who will answer questions of guests who are still not sure or have additional questions help them to fill in the applications, because in small groups it is much easier to do this, and uh, sign up for the upcoming event using the success planning sheet. Here you, he can write uh, information about the payment, how he will pay and when, what roles do they want to, to have at the next meetings and when do they want to make their icebreaker. And it is very important not to give 
uh, roles and speeches to guests, because especially at the beginning when you start a club, because if a person doesn't pay membership fee, but he is given the opportunity to speak and to perform a role, then he just doesn't see value in being club member and he will keep coming to the meeting as a guest. So remember to tell people about that, that they can take the speech or role only after they pay. After the meeting, of course, uh, you want, after you finish the meeting, don't forget about the follow-up. So send thank you emails within the first 24 hours, call everyone w within 48 hours, collect applications from people who didn't uh, give it at the launch meeting, payments, ask people for payments when they will pay. It is uh, very important to do this uh, really intensive follow-up with everyone in, in order to be able to charter the club fast. If someone cannot pay, for example, the whole amount, then you can take only part and uh, another part later. Invite people to the next meetings and it is very important to make the club already exist in all the social media, to have the web page, meetup group, so that people can see that this is, uh, they can be sure that this club exists and every week they can come there. Uh, you ne will need to assist people with first projects because you will have many new members and uh, they you will have to orient them how to perform different functions and so on. So you will need to assign mentors as fast as possible. And of course, when you have those 20 applications, then uh, just send those charter documents. We uh, had over 20 applications two weeks after the launch event and two, I think that two weeks after we chartered the club because we had to collect all the documents and signatures and payments and so on. Um, Three members of the club can be dual and 17 new or transfer members. So this is basically the, the whole secret. The, at the beginning you need to prepare very good, prepare your team, prepare everything for starting the club so that club should be already existing even before the launch meeting, then run the launch meeting in such a way so that all the guests are very, very engaged into the whole process. Don't forget about the close and call for applications in the end. And of course, intensive follow-up with every guest from the meeting. So this is the, uh, the method which Rick Furbus suggested. Rick Furbus I opened 108 clubs in three years. So this with this method. And every time he conducted the launch meeting, he opened and chartered the club. So this method worked. It worked for me for sure. And uh, I will sh send you all those documents I showed you. And I hope that this method will also work for you and you will try to get from it something for your clubs as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that then. So I have a couple of questions for you if you're open for questions now. Yes, sure. Okay, so the first question comes from Greta is what if the team is completely new? How to motivate new members to become officers. She's the only one experienced currently as she's starting a corporate club. 
So the question is, what if the team is completely new and how to motivate new members to become officers? Um, well, in our club, we had part of the team uh, of experienced members and uh, part of the team uh, completely new, I mean officers. And in my opinion, it's very important to have an experienced vice president education. So if you are the only experienced, then I would suggest you to take this role or to help uh, VP extensively. And uh, vice president membership is also very important, but this can be a just, just a good let's say salesperson, person who is good with people and the rest of the team they don't need to have, in my opinion, Toastmasters experience. I think that they just need to uh, be motivated and uh, to cooperate with their area director. Thank you very much. The second question was actually wrote by two people at the same time almost, so it's from Jacob and Reno, is how to get the forms that you've shown? I will, I will send the, those forms. I'm not sure if we can get email addresses of uh, the people who attended. Mm, I think we can sort about that a little bit later, but if we post it possibly to a district fan page channel or a district channel, I think it may be easier. Okay, As we can post it. I will, yes, I will collect all those documents and I will send them to Wendy so that she can post it on our social media. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is from Greta. She says, how many sponsors or mentors can we have all together? And then she added to that, because she knows the official numbers of the sponsors and mentors, but can she just ask her fellow club members to do those official roles, or are, are they something special that you can't ask members to do? Mm, well, you can have two sponsors and two mentors officially, but if someone wants to be a club mentor, like third or fourth, of course they can, but they cannot get credit for that, I think. Yep, and I'd like to add to that also is that uh, can they be fellow club members? Is that meaning brand new members possibly, Greta? Because in which case, how would they be able to mentor another club if they don't know the process already? So typically it would be a Toastmaster that's already on their um, advanced manuals, for example. They may have already done a district officer position in the past, it's possible or they were thinking about some of that, but usually it's an experienced Toastmaster that would do that. And then we have another question. It's from Anya. During group evaluation, do our guests work individually or in smaller groups together? Usually they work individually. They just, uh, during the speech, they make notes and uh, you can tell them also that they don't have to give the, these notes to the speaker because some, some of them are stressed that someone will see their opinion. Uh, you can tell that this is for you, for your own use. You can make no, notes or not. And uh, they are working individually and then they are presenting, of course, individually because you want every guest to have a word, to, to say something. Perfect. The next question is from Anya. Is who will be a charter member? Is it the one who leaves the application first or the one who pays first? And if there is more than 20 people interested, what happens then? Well, this is uh, actually, <laughs> this is a very good question. And Rick Furbush also tells about this in his video that if you have more than 20 people in the room, then you can say that, so we have 30 or 40 people here, but only 20 
can become charter members, but only today when 25 people ha or 30 people give membership applications, then you can also be charter member. Because the truth is that charter members are the first members of the club. They, there should be minimum 20 members, but there is no limit. There can be 30 or 40 if you have so many, so many new members. But you can just play with those numbers in order to motivate them to, to hand in the applications as fast as possible. Yep, that's perfect. And then we have one question from Adam. How big is your city, Elena? Because he supposes the population has a huge impact of reaching new members, because his city has approximately 60,000 people. Well, my city has, I think, 700,000, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't think that. I know that there are Toastmasters Club in very small cities because actually in small cities uh, there are strong local communities where you can try to find uh, people for your club. I think that it all depends on the PR you make before the, before the starting and also in, in small cities it is easier to um, to find people because there are local newspapers, some local chats, and I think that it, it shouldn't be a problem to get uh, people to the event. Thank you. And that's all the questions we have at the moment. Do you have any more slides? No, I have the last one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Yep. I will share all the documents I showed uh, and uh, I think I don't know when Wendy will put it up, but I think that they will all be on our social media channels. Thank you very much for coming today, Elena. So as we've seen today, there's a lot involved in the preparation of starting a new club. As you go along, there's always things that can be improved, let's say. And if you do make a mistake, you can always rectify it. I'm pretty sure that can happen. But mostly it's about preparation, preparation, preparation. The links to um, the videos that we had from District 74, Elena's already posted that, and the person there was called Rick Furbish. He was referenced quite a lot. I think you made the guy famous tonight, if he wasn't already. Um, the other district channels will be used to distribute the documentation which Elena was showing today. If you, the, I've got a, some questions popping up now from Michael. It says, what social media channels? I just got the link. Yep. And I sent it to you, Michael, today, actually. So the social media links I'll be sending it to is our Facebook groups. And I can also send you the link directly, Michael, as I'm already in contact with you. So if there's any other questions, you can type them into the box now while we still got a couple more minutes left. If not, I would like to wish Elena a very nice evening and thank you very much for giving her time today. So if we can wait a couple of minutes for people to, to write in any questions and then I can stop. So one question from Anya is, how many people came to your demo meeting? Mm, I think that we had about 25 people at the demo meeting, uh, at, at this launch event, and we got 14 applications at this meeting. So we, had, we needed two more weeks to collect the rest. Okay, then we have another question. Do you have any recommendations about starting a corporate club? Well, as to corporate club, I would recommend to do everything the same. You just need to approach the HR manager before to arrange this meeting with uh, them if they are interested in starting the club in the company and after you are okay with management then you just run everything 
the same. The meeting can be a little bit shorter, of course, for corporate clubs because usually there are no, not two speakers but one speaker and my table topics may be a little bit shorter. You want to leave as much time as possible for the last work in groups for the last part. Yep, and if I can add to that, we have um, the Deputy Club Growth Director, Ewan Scattergood, in webinar number four, that's going to be, no, sorry, webinar number three, he's going to be talking about the club growth and how we can help with that with the club coaches, for example. And webinar number four, I'm going to be hosting the new club creation series with our regional advisor, Aletta, and she's going to be focusing the Q&A session on corporate clubs. And that's also in the first weeks of March. And there will be a advertisement made about that on our Facebook groups. And it'll be given to Wendy to share on our social media, if that helps at all. So the next question is from uh, Gutis is, do you have any experience about reaching out to other international clubs and become friends, like sponsor each other, and co-op somehow to make it more international and fun to be a guest and with members? We actually had two clubs in our city before. Now we opened the third one and we got a great help from them. So yes, we reached out, reached out to those clubs and they helped us with money for charter kit, people, some people joined as dual members from both clubs. Some people became sponsors and mentors. So, yeah, we, we are cooperating quite good with other clubs. Very good. And some of you may know, uh, for me personally, I spent the month of December, or a large part of it, in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur. And I actually went to a lot of clubs there. And by going to different clubs, specifically, you could say, very internationally, so not inside, like within your local region, but, you know, into another continent basically you start to see the toastmasters has the same sort of feel but they have their own flavors like for example in kuala lumpur the clubs i went to they had food every meeting had food involved with it whether it was the beginning of the meeting or at the end of the meeting or during the break they always had food some clubs started the beginning um starting with the toastmasters promise i'd never done that before and I've been in Toastmasters for many years. So they started by everybody standing up, putting their hand on their heart and reading the Toastmasters pledge. So these sort of things you can get by visiting international clubs. And as a Toastmaster, you're more than welcome to visit any other Toastmasters club internationally. And it's very much appreciated to do that. And I have a question from Greta. And it's quite an imp uh, uh, quite an interesting one, actually. Is what was the purpose or the agenda of your chartering party slash event? The photos looked awesome. Uh, sorry, once again, what about this charter party? Yeah, what was the agenda or the purpose of your chartering event, like the party you had? Because the photos that you posted looked awesome. Yes, uh, this is this was the aim actually of the chartering party to make awesome photos, and uh, basically PR uh, things. So to make good photos, we made photos of our officers with banner. We dressed up. And uh, the agenda was quite short. We had uh, we had speeches. We, we didn't have evaluation, so we had we have such special meetings quite often. For example, Christmas parties. Um, we don't have general evaluator there. We just have we don't have our counter, so we just have speakers, evaluators, and uh, the table topics part and then we just go and have drinks so quite good to have a bit of fun <laughs> and the next question is from Anya is it a good idea to promote other clubs during this meeting not only the new prospective club during the launch event I'm always telling that clubs should cooperate and uh, we always 
invite people to do other clubs, to see other clubs, but during the club launch event I wouldn't recommend that because the goal of your meeting, the main goal is to start a club. So you just need to get people to the room and to make the most out of it. So you want to get their membership applications and of course to for charter membership applications to open this new club or to if you want to relaunch the club then for club relaunching so not at this launch meeting I, I would say that's very good and then a question for Michael is since he wasn't able to attend webinar number one is it possible to see the recording there is a recording I think on our Facebook uh, page right yep that's correct it was published there and I can also show you the link Michael if you don't have it directly access to it so I think we're getting close now to the end of our time limit so I would then like to you know have final questions if they're there we have one from Anya this is going to be the last question this evening is did you invite guests to the after party after the launch meeting so did you invite guests to the after party after the launch meeting and that's the last question this evening Yes, and I didn't mention it, but after party is very important for persuading guests to join as well, because it also show when you go after the the official part to get some drinks to chat in casual atmosphere, then you can persuade people to join even more than in in the official atmosphere of the club meeting. So we always have those after parties and after the launch meeting we had one as well. Perfect. Thank you very much. Is there any closing words you'd like to say before I stop the, the, the webinar and end the recording? Well, I would like to say thank you very much for uh, listening and uh, if you have any additional questions you can write me an email or write me on Facebook and I would be happy to help you with uh, you, your clubs. Wonderful. Thank you very much, everybody. And now I'm going to stop the recording.